about uh, understanding the pulmonary valve pulmonary valve you've been looking at number of uh, years let me give you another dimension to the pulmonary valve you look this is the patient of a pulmonary stenosis you this is the aorta this has been zoomed view right ventricle pulmonary artery and then you see that's the pulmonary valve which is thickened and doming but notice which are the leaflets now this leaflet which is lying on the left side of of your screen is an anterior leaflet of the pulmonary valve and which is lying close to the aorta is the left pulmonary leaflet valve leaflet and the right pulmonary leaflet is lying behind in the different plane so understanding this in the cross section view that's an aorta rvot you have an anterior leaflet here you have a left leaflet there why should i discuss anterior and left leaflet because we can see all yes don't be surprised we can see all now once you do a parasternal short axis view there this is what you see you see the cross section of an aortic valve this is at the level of the aortic valve sax and then you see this aortic valve you see the right atrium interatrial septum you see this right ventricle outflow tract and you see the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery here you see this is the anterior pulmonary leaflet and that's the left pulmonary leaflet which i showed you in my, my previous uh, slide now this is the plane where you are working actually you see the tricuspid valve here then you see the aorta and then you see the pulmonary artery and the plane actually transacts between the left coronary cusp a uh, left uh, uh, pulmonary valve cusp and the anterior pulmonary valve cusp so this is what we can see on this but can we see the pulmonary valve cross section and nfas okay that's what i'm going to tell you today what you do from here is that this is the short axis view at the aortic valve go little cranial and little medial close to the manubrium sterni and that's where what you would find is that the pulmonary valve would come right in the line of of a uh, the the scanning area so if this is the line of the scanning area once you get that you can actually either rotate the probe to get an nfas view or you can put an x plane so using a philips machine you can use an x plane and you see on the x plane that's the pulmonary valve you put the x plane here it gives you the biplane the other 90 degree uh, plane and voila you see this is a tri leaflet pulmonary valve producing a pulmonary stenosis so you can see a cross section of a pulmonary valve like this now i had just told you all this because i am bringing in some new concept now the new concept is here what you see is the dilated pulmonary artery and you see a kind of an eccentric jet of the pulmonary valve the pulmonary velocities were normal and you see this eccentrically uh, enlarged pulmonary artery clinically or on echocardiogram i would have made the diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary artery dilatation because the flow is normal pulmonary valve is not stenotic so that's what i'm left with the idiopathic dilatation of the pulmonary artery okay and here what you see is the is the flow coming towards the probe this is because of the encircling of the blood flow in the dilated pulmonary artery and i've done an m mode here on the m mode you see this is uh, the systole and this is the systolic frame and in the systolic frame you see the forward as well as uh, away from the transducer in the blue so if i move slightly uh, medially with the my m mode cut and you see that this flow what i see here is not a diastolic flow like we see in a pda this is the flow in systole which is due to encircling of the blood due to dilatation of pulmonary artery and that's we see it pretty commonly in patients with dilated pulmonary artery of any cause so now in the same patient what we did we did an x plane or a biplane view and what we did we just 
acquired an image where the pulmonary valve was you know in that transection line perpendicular line of the scan and the pulmonary valve was there notice the pulmonary valve is eccentrically closing this is the larger leaflet that's the smaller this is equate this with the bicuspid aortic valve where you have an eccentric closure of the valve so this is eccentric closure of the pulmonary valve when we put a biplane and in the biplane you see this is the pulmonary valve is a bicuspid the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet anterior being larger and posterior being smaller so you see a, a patient where pulmonary artery is dilated without pulmonary stenosis we would have called it as an idiopathic pulmonary artery dilatation but now you notice the pulmonary valve is bicuspid now if the pulmonary valve is bicuspid like what we have in in patients with aortic valve bicuspid aortic valve what do you see there you call it an aortopathy so the concept is i am not sure whether there is an pulmonopathy exist in patients with the pulmonary valve which is a bicuspid so we do not know the number of patients what we see of an idiopathic pulmonary artery dilatation could actually be the bicuspid pulmonary valve and maybe in future let me get my data and find out whether can we call it a pulmonary pulmonopathy like we call in bi, uh, in bicuspid aortic valve and aortopathy so thanks for watching please subscribe i am going to keep posting the videos the moment i post a video you will be immediately notified if you subscribe the channel bye till then keep learning